Hello there, my fellow eradicators of the demonic, and welcome to another video about the Grey Knights. Today, we are going to discuss another section of this very special chapter of Space Marines in the form of their unique organization and some details about their brotherhoods. Another thing worth noting in this case is that... <gasps> They do not, and are not required to, respect the Codex Astartes. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us continue learning about this secretive chapter, shall we? The Grey Knights is unlike any other Space Marine chapter, built around the tenets laid down by Malkador the Sigilite and the first Grand Masters of the chapter. The Grey Knights, like I panicked about earlier, do not follow the dictates of the Codex Astartes. Their organization, ranks, and deployment are dictated not by the teachings of Robot Gilliman, but by the unique demands of their war against the demonic. While the Grey Knights are technically Astartes, they do not involve themselves with the ordinary activities of the other Space Marines. They have no progenitor Primarch as their gene seed was supposed to be crafted from the genome of the Emperor himself, and so they are also not listed under any founding. They are attached to the Ordo Malleus, serving as their chamber militant, charged with uncovering and expunging the heretical taint of chaos wherever it may be found. The Grey Knights as a whole, though, are governed and directed by a chapter council, at this oaken table sit eight Grand Masters and the chapter's true lord, commonly referred to as the Supreme Grand Master. The structure of this council is one of the Grey Knight's oldest traditions, as laid down at the chapter's founding by Malkador himself and his eight Astartes recruits. Although the chapter lord's role is absolute, he can only be appointed by the unanimous consent of the other Grand Masters so it is almost impossible for a reckless or unsuitable candidate to achieve dominion over the chapter. Every Grand Master holds sway over one of the chapter's secondary bodies, like the chapter fleet or the chapter armory. However, such roles are largely honorary. The organization in question needs very little oversight. The Grey Knights are spread thin across the galaxy, and it is not always possible for a brother captain to command every strike force. Thus, the Grand Masters themselves do take charge of the most crucial campaigns where even an experienced battle brother is not believed equal to the task. This most commonly happens when one of the Conclave Diabolus, the 101 Greater Demons, in which the Grey Knights take special interest, is sighted in the mortal realm. The Council actually meets only in great times of peril or dire need, as the eight Grand Masters are often crusading far away from Titan in the far-flung reaches of the galaxy. Every Grand Master has an equal voice within the Council, though the Supreme Grand Master has the power and the responsibility to make those very final judgments. The bulk of the Grey Knights chapter is organized into so-called Brotherhoods, fighting formations roughly equivalent to the battle companies of other Space Marine chapters. The chapter comprises eight such Brotherhoods, each one corresponding to one of the eight Astartes chosen by Malkador the Sigilite and the Emperor himself to be the initial core of the chapter at the time of the Horus Heresy. On paper, every one of the chapter's brotherhoods contains roughly 100 battle brothers under arms. Though this nominal figure does not include the brotherhood's officers, the brotherhood's captain in active command, the brotherhood champion, and the grand master holding responsibility over the brotherhood. Each brotherhood's brothers are divided up into various squads and formations of the chapter. Each one of these falls into several broad categories focused on the different fighting methods and specialized war gear used by the Grey Knights. As with other Space Marine chapters, Grey Knights are primarily organized into squads of ten battle brothers, each one of which can divide further into two combat squads of five should the mission's tactical requirements so dictate. 
A Grey Knight squad is considered to remain effective even with only 5 members. So, with a small amount of duty reassignment and doctrinal flexibility, a brother captain can keep his own brotherhood at an acceptable fighting strength, even with up to a third of his warriors out of commission. Decisions concerning the exact breakdown of each squad type within a brotherhood rests entirely with its brother captain and grand master. However, it has long been proven that a rough balance of squads, between 3 and 7 operational units of Terminator, Purgation and Strike Squads, is by far the most effective combination. Accordingly, all but the most maverick of commanders follow this example, and only make minor changes to suit their own tactical preferences. Regardless of role, all the squads of the Grey Knights draw their equipment from the same armory of Nemesis Force weapons, grenades, storm bolters, and psi-enhanced heavy weaponry. Each squad also independently practices its own psychic disciplines, the better to allow mental and physical prowess to act in reinforced harmony. The only drawback to this organization is that when a Grey Knight moves from one type of squad to another, he must learn how to wield his psychic potential in battle anew, suppressing all other applications he has learned to this point. Each of a Brotherhood squads is led by a Justicar, a Grey Knight with the equivalent rank of a Space Marine Sergeant. It takes a very powerful mind to lead Grey Knights in battle, both physically and psychically, and only the most adept Battle Brothers can rise to this honored rank. In addition to bonds of leadership, it is the Justicar's duty to own and focus the psychic powers of the Battle Brothers he leads, and to also act as the conduit for these abilities. Such a role places the Justicar in greater danger than his fellows, for as the squad's mystic focus, he will be the first to suffer should any things go awry. During his career, a Battle Brother of the chapter will take on many different roles, from serving in the Terminator squads with Blade and Stormbolter, to the more lightly armored Strike squads or heavily armed Purgation squads. It is the responsibility of a Grey Knight to become skilled at all the weapons used by the chapter, just as he must own his psychic powers into a mystic blade with which to cut down the warp spawn. All Battle Brothers are trained in the use of every piece of war gear and armor possessed by the chapter. Thus, it is possible for a Battle Brother to serve in a different type of squad as early as from one mission to another. Since the wiki sources have blessed us with intimate detail on the preferences and disposition of each brotherhood, I also wanted to bring these details to you. These, alongside my apologies, if the second part of the video starts looking like a laundry list. But I do know some viewers, myself included, do enjoy this kind of analytical detail. The First Brotherhood Varden Kai commands the First Brotherhood with Kadric Pelinus as the Brother Captain. As Kai is the chapter's steward of the armory, his Brotherhood is often called upon when the Grey Knights require large amounts of Storm Ravens or Land Raiders and it contains many of the finest pilots and drivers of the chapter. Kai oversees the war machines of the Grey Knights and the tech marines that maintain them, ensuring that they remain in perfect fighting condition. If the wards upon a rhino are imperfect, or the engines of a storm raven less than pristine, it is to Kai that a battle brother must answer. The forces of this brotherhood include 23 tech marines, 75 Tech Servitors, 20 Land Raiders, 24 Rhinos, 21 Storm Ravens, 18 Nemesis Dread Knights, 1 Brotherhood Champion, 5 Terminator Squads, 5 Interceptor Squads, 5 Purgation Squads, 5 Strike Squads, and 1 Dreadnought. The Second Brotherhood Vorf Mardrak commands the Second Brotherhood, with Arno Trevon as its brother captain. Mordrak's Brotherhood has a well-deserved reputation for rapid deployment and swift strikes, even by the standards of the Grey Knights. 
The Brotherhood makes use of large numbers of interceptor and strike squads, using mass teleportation and teleport home or assault tactics to outmaneuver their enemies. The second is often in the vanguard of combined Brotherhood assaults, seeding the way for heavier troops to follow. As Admiral of the Fleet, the Grand Master must possess a skill with maneuvers that ensures the Grey Knight's rapid deployment to a war zone. Over time, these traits have become synonymous with the Second Brotherhood. The forces of this Brotherhood include Four Battle Barges, the Fire of Dawn, Bright Sword, Emperor's Will, and the Redeemer of Souls, Twelve Strike Cruisers, Eight Rapid Strike Vessels, Eight Thunderhawks, One Brotherhood Champion, Six Terminator Squads, Seven Interceptor Squads, Six Purgation Squads, Seven Strike Squads, and Two Dreadnoughts. The Third Brotherhood Aldric Voldus, Warden of the Librarium, commands the Third Brotherhood with Arvan Stern as its brother captain. The Third Brotherhood has always held a place of honor within the chapter. It was, according to legend, Janus's own brotherhood, and throughout the long history of the Grey Knights, it has fostered many heroes of the chapter. Kaldor Drago was brother captain and then Grand Master of the Third, with Arvan Stern following in the Supreme Grand Master's footsteps. With a reputation for glory, the Third has also borne the attention of some of the Grey Knights' greatest foes. Many times during its history, the Third has come close to extinction, demonic adversaries seeking vengeance for the actions of its brother captain or Grand Master. Their forces include one chief librarian, three epistolaries, twelve codicias, nine lexiconiums, twelve acolytums, one brotherhood champion, six terminator squads, three interceptor squads, four purgation squads, five strike squads, and three dreadnoughts. The Fourth Brotherhood Drystan Krom, Keeper of the Ogorium, commands the Fourth Brotherhood with Ionan Grud as its brother captain. The Fourth contains many of the chapter's most potent psychas, warriors with an instinctual understanding of the warp that goes beyond even that of their peers. It is from the Fourth Brotherhood that new prognosticators are often chosen, after they become too badly wounded to fight. The Brotherhood has also displayed an uncanny ability to sense danger before it materializes. Their forces include 12 Prognosticars, 50 Monotask Servitors, 1 Brotherhood Champion, 3 Terminator Squads, 6 Interceptor Squads, 5 Purgation Squads, 6 Strike Squads, and 3 Dreadnoughts. The Fifth Brotherhood Rothweir Morvans, protector of the Sanctum Sanctorum, commands the Fifth Brotherhood with Taurus Hendron as its brother captain. Some of the greatest heroes of the chapter continue in their duty even after their bodies have been crippled beyond repair, entombed within one of the chapter's many dreadnoughts. The Fifth Brotherhood has always been the warden of the wealth of the Grey Knight's dreadnoughts, its Grand Master as much the chronicler of their deeds as their commander. While other Brotherhoods do contain dreadnoughts, most of these begin within the Sanctum Sanctorum, their histories and glories carefully considered before they are honored with entombment. Grand Master Morvans is one of the few that actually speaks with these warriors, often awakening them for war. In battle, the Fifth will often be deployed alongside several Dreadnoughts, as Morvans is aware that if one of these deathless warriors is left too long dormant, he might never be roused again. It is a cycle of war that the Dreadnoughts are doomed to repeat endlessly, as long as the chapter has need of their power. Their forces include 20 Sanctum Guardians, 12 Apothecaries, 1 Brotherhood Champion, 4 Terminator Squads, 4 Purgation Squads, 4 Interception Squads, 8 Strike Squads, and 5 Dreadnoughts. The Sixth Brotherhood 
Anvil Lorayon, High Seneschal of the Fortress, commands the Sixth Brotherhood with Cadon Varn as its brother captain. Larion is an exacting warrior, a trait that saw him ascend to the rank of High Seneschal and is reflected in the Warriors of the Sixth. The Grand Master believes in no wasted effort or force, often arguing to the Chapter Council against the use of more than a single part of a Brotherhood unless the most extreme circumstances call for it. Larion understands that there are far too few Grey Knights for the task of protecting the whole Imperium and is loath to waste even a single one. The High Seneschal believes that striking at the right time and in the right place, a handful of the Grey Knights can do the job of a whole Brotherhood. Their forces include 271 Chapter Equerries, 500 Servitors, 1 Brotherhood Champion, 5 Terminator Squads, 6 Interceptor Squads, 3 Purgation Squads, six strike squads, and two dreadnoughts. The Seventh Brotherhood Kovan Liorak, representative to the Inquisition, commands the Seventh Brotherhood with Darik Tegvar as its brother captain. The Inquisition and the Grey Knights are inextricably linked, their goals often aligning. The Seventh Brotherhood has a long history of operations alongside the Ordo Malleus and many brother captains have personal relationships with inquisitors. As a result, respected inquisitors are more likely to gain favor from the brotherhood if they call for aid, as more than one inquisitor has learned. Grand Master Leorak maintains the chapter's secret knowledge of the inquisition, tomes of lore on the inquisitors of each ordo reaching back thousands and thousands of years. It is rare for individual battle brothers to serve with the same Inquisitor more than once, lest either should learn too much about the other. Their forces include 24 scribes, 3 astropaths, 1 brotherhood champion, 3 terminator squads, 3 purgation squads, 3 strike squads, 5 interceptor squads, and 2 dreadnoughts. The Eighth Brotherhood Aidan Perdon, Knight Commander of the Recruits, commands the Eighth Brotherhood with Mifrak Thor as its brother captain. When a newly forged battle brother joins the ranks of the Grey Knights, he will often be sequestered to the Eighth Brotherhood. If he proves himself worthy, he then may find a place within one of the other Brotherhoods, depending on his natural talents and the favor of the Grand Masters. In time, many of these battle brothers do remain with the Eighth, understanding the importance of finding those rare recruits suitable to become Grey Knights and keeping the chapter alive. Their forces include 32 neophytes, thousands of recruits, 38 monotask servitors, 1 brotherhood champion, 7 terminator squads, 3 interceptor squads, three strike squads, seven purgation squads, and one dreadnought. Finally, apart from these brotherhoods, we also have a few additional forces at the chapter command level. These ones can include the Hall of Champions, with High Paladin Govanon Bors, also with 98 Paladins and 12 Venerable Dreadnoughts, and the Chambers of Purity, with Castellan Garen Crow and 44 Purifiers. And that, my friends, has been my overview of the Grey Knight style of organization and some details on all of its eight brotherhoods. What are your thoughts on the Grey Knight's organization? Do you think it's superior or warranted compared to the average Space Marine chapter? Let us know and discuss in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to help me keep this channel alive, please go visit my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.